Well, uh, <laughs> it's a hot mess on it. Yeah, we keep finding stuff too. So, this week we're starting on putting the 470W in this car. If you've got a Falcon, Maverick, Cougar, Mustang, whoa! Hey, how you doing? If you got one of those cars, this is probably going to help you out with figuring out how to get the C4 out and the other transmission in. Remember, always unhook your battery, preferably before you put it up in the air. Battery's unhooked. Also a good idea to go ahead and put it in neutral when it's on the ground and not up in the air. See, sometimes lifts can be a real problem for things like that. Well, uh, <laughs> it's a hot mess under here. Yeah, we keep finding stuff too. It's just, I mean, it's not, I don't know, man. I look at this car and I'm like, it's a neat little car and it's got a lot going for it. There's a lot of cool things mm -hmm. on it. Already has disc brakes, that kind of stuff. But the suspension on the driver's side is shot. It's, yeah. it's taken a super hard hit, and yeah. that's got to be fixed. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of things we need to do to the engine, so we're actually now talking. <laughs> well, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually now talking. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. We're actually now talking about taking the engine completely out when we pull the transmission out to put all the things on it, detail it, clean it, make it look nice. And to fix go back the engine the bay, all the wiring, and all There's that. a lot of things going on in there that's going to be really hard to fix. With, with an engine in there, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do that, but that's coming on down this, in the, the pipe a little bit. We probably won't show that unless you guys are just gluttons for our punishment and you want to watch us pull an engine out. I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go through and we're analyzing and looking at everything. First order of business when you're pulling a transmission, make sure you know where everything is and where everything goes and what needs to be looked at and replaced. If we were putting the C4 back in here, we've already seen a couple of things that, that kind of concern us. They've put some, uh, what is that? Just is uh, that RTV put, around the band adjustment. I'm not really familiar with that, but I don't like RTV anywhere. We don't like, yeah, we don't like RTV on that. Uh, the neutral safety switch isn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rear, it is neutral. It's just not safe because it's not doing anything. Rear bushing is gone for transmission mount. Um, this has been into before. What you said about the transmission lines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's got a yeah. heating point up yeah. here. Because the transmission lines are actually incorrectly, they've got a kink in them. Yeah. So it's not pushing transmission yeah, fluid through. kinks. It's a very kinky <laughs> yeah. transmission line set. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to pull all that stuff out. But we're going to do first, because we are pulling the engine, is I'm going to, I'm going to get the exhaust manifolds off after I cut the back section back here using my exhaust cutter, which we're going to do that right now. For the record, he's supposed to be wearing safety glasses. I've asked him to wear safety glasses. He refuses to wear them. I don't care. <laughs> All right, so we are under the car now. I've got a battery charger hooked up, and before we pull this starter off, we are going to allow it to do some work for us. I've got a remote starter switch here, and we're going to use the starter to bump over the engine to pull our torque converter nuts, I should say, into place. This one's already right here. These are 9 sixteenths. This is your torque converter drain plug. If you so wish to use it, it'll drain all the torque converter out. You wanna put it right about here, so it's at the lowest point. It'll drain most of the torque converter fluid out. Uh, it normally makes a big mess. We're just gonna keep the converter on the input shaft and hopefully not puke on the floor, but that's for future camming problems. All right, so I'm gonna break this loose. You wanna kinda of bump it to not spin the engine over if you can 
or stick a screwdriver and a flywheel tooth, that works too. And these are a fine thread, most of the time locking nut. So they will be kind of a pain to remove at times. All right, now I got the one off. I'm gonna bump it. Next. The fun thing about these ones being locking nuts is they are oftentimes just loose enough to not be able to use the ratchet, but too tight for your fingers. All right, that was four. That should be all of them, but I'm just gonna spin it over. Yep, there's our first one. So we are good to go. And I'm gonna try and, yep. You saw right there, the thread's just pulled back. That is the torque converter sitting back onto the input shaft and into the pump. It's not stuck in the flex plate or crankshaft, which uh, is really, really not fun to get off. So we are good there. I'm gonna take the battery cables back off, pop the starter off next and move on down the line. We're gonna start taking off our dry components. Uh, kick down linkage, I'm gonna take that off. We're going to take the shifter linkage off back here at the shifter itself. If you leave this linkage on the chassis, every time I pull the transmission, the linkage gets caught when you get about where you can't reach anything. So I like to just take it off completely and drop it with the transmission. So we've got a, bye, a cotter key there. I'm going to pull that out. That bushing looks okay. If I can find that key again. Oh, hello. I'm going to do my due diligence to keep all this in order. All right, next up, I'm going to take out our awesome transmission kick down linkage. It's got a really sweet zip tie in there. Boom, auto removed, wonderful. All right, that's good, that's good. You are off, speedo cable. That actually appears to be a metric bolt that somebody rammed in there. So we're gonna have to find a pair of pliers or maybe a 10 millimeter. Let me go find some tools. All right, so we are now going to remove the transmission lines. Uh, we are not at all worried about reusing these. So if they pose a problem, we're just gonna cut them off. But they should be fine. All the ferrule nuts are actually spinning on the line. So nothing seized. This back one is actually pressed up against the floorboard right now. The line is so kind of worried that it won't come out but it's gonna come out <laughs> as long as this nut will get off of there all right let's felt that get much looser there it is boom one line down all right, this next one is even looser. And it's got a little bit of ATF. This stuff will probably drip. That's why we put the polyethylene down on the floor just to protect the floor so we don't get some stains in it. But these lines are out. I'm going to pull them off the radiator next. Uh, one of these I'm just gonna cut at the soft line because the fitting looks kind of questionable and don't wanna tackle that at the moment. So get these out of here and move on. All right, next up is the rear drive shaft. Well, the drive shaft. <laughs> no need to be specific. Let me take one out. I want to look at the threads on that because it got tight, but the threads look fine. A little bit rolled where it goes through the yoke, but otherwise I don't really like reusing these. They're uh, cheap insurance to get new ones, but 
still reasonable. To keep this from dropping on my head, I'm going to put the bottom bridge back in. One drive shaft to the head is enough for a lifetime. Because the angle of the drive shaft, the top one's kind of stuck. So I'm going to take it and try and bump it. There it is. All right, you want to hold your caps because they love to fall off. And then once you got the back off, slip it out of the transmission and make a nice little puddle on the floor. That was planned. Let me uh, put this someplace that's not. Ooh. That's not good. All right, so we are going to drain the drain the pan. Um, this is kind of really annoying in an early C4 or any C4 to my knowledge because they did not have drain plugs in the pans, so you have to uh, take a bath. So yeah. Uh, I've already got two of the front ones off just because they're easier because they're right next to me. I'm going to loosen the corners and leave them about two threads in so the pan can drop down but not all the way off because uh, that's when the real bath happens. Oh, and it's already leaking out the front. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is not the side I wanted it to drain to. All right, yep, I'm just gonna hold this drain pan here and let it uh, do its thing for a minute. Although it doesn't look bad. It doesn't smell the greatest, but not oxidized at all so either it was burnt before and they s put new f trans fluid in it yeah I'd say it's fine and you do not have to drain this pan completely uh, just get it down into the pan because when the trans is normally full it's kind of above the pan level and it's really easy to come out the tail shaft when you're pulling the transmission out but we are already pretty much completely off so i'm going to just pull this off for now to let it really drain and then we'll put it back on before we get out of here and pull the trans out actually. Oh, here comes it. Don't go down my arm, don't go down my arm. Get out of your hole. Why is this bolt so long? All right, so not too bad. A uh, little bit of clutch material right there, right there. Maybe a smidge of surface rust inside the pan. Or, no, that's all clutch material. But overall, looks good. All right, so we've got this drop down a little bit lower so our trans jack will work. Uh, we've got a triple, three gloves at, on the output shaft just to catch any drips that come out of this. Uh, I am going to take this wonderful, useful park cable off so it doesn't choke me at some point. <coughs> and sling that back there. So it won't ever be a problem again. All right, and next I'm going to take our dip stick tube off. I've already got the top two bell housing bolts off. I'm going to take the next top two off, leaving the side ones in. It's perfectly fine. It will hold it no problem. So get a 5 8 extendo ratchet. See if I bust my knuckle. I did not, luckily. All right, that 
one is out. Now our dipstick tube should jiggle up just like so. It's got an O-ring on here. Might as well check that if you're gonna reuse it. This O-ring looks fine. Right. Now for the other side bolt. So now we got two bell housing bolts left holding it in and our rear cross member. Our rear cross member bolts are loose, nuts are off the mount. So all we have to do is put the jack up under it, support the weight, pull this back, pull our two bolts out, and the trans comes off. All right, so we got the trans jack in place. Uh, we got it kind of on here sideways because we don't have the safety stuff. But... <laughs> safety third. Yeah, safety fifth. <laughs> wow, you're dropping the weight. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of weight on it. I'm going to give it a smidge more. All right. Weight's off the cross member, but before I take those completely out, I'm going to take the bell housing bolts off. That wasn't even hand tight. I feel like I'm in a drunk, li drunk lightsaber fight with this thing. <laughs> oh, that one's tight. So that is out. It's a little loose. Yeah, it's already off. The torque converter's off the. All right, so I'm gonna plate. give it a smidge more. Pull the cross member bolts out. And what I'm here for is to actually make sure that the torque converter is off of the flex plate as he pulls it back. We are okay. We don't want the torque converter falling out of here. Yeah, um, so he's just from. there is a. I'm looking, Safety. I'm here to look pretty. See, Safety with what safe. we're doing right now. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we take it seriously, guys. <laughs> All right, we are free from the block. It's reasonably priced anyway. Uh, are those studs staying in the flex plate or are they out? Oh, they're out. All right, we're going to have to drop the it. Is, um, it's just it's where it's supposed to be. Okay, okay. going to have to drop a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably going to be a lot of a bit. We still... Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I peed a little! You know, if this is my trans, I think I would have just <laughs> myself. <laughs> Alright. Going down again. Alright, let's go with that. See? <laughs> I feel like we've done this before. A time or two or three. Yeah. All right, there she is, yes. and all her go all her gory. No fluid. <laughs> Nothing actually, ripping at this end? It actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, no, it looks like a rebuilt trans at some point. Mm. Yeah, tear into it. So we're looking at a 1982 case, we think. Mm -hmm. uh, the, at least the, the part numbers that are on the side of it indicate an 82. Okay. Um, I think, you know, this will probably make a good transmission for us to go through and do a build out on. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get with somebody out there, get all the parts to make it uh, nice and mm -hmm. build it up a little bit. 
It's got the uh, B servo yeah. on it, which is supposedly the better servo yeah, for it's the these. Yeah, the big body car servo. I wonder if this might be like a performance automatic or something like that mm -hmm. that did this. Because PA usually does their transmissions in black. That doesn't mean it is because I see no other indication on this thing that it's that made by them. Yeah. But yeah, it was obviously built by somebody. Somebody put it together. It's got a decent, you know, the torque converter looks fine. So I think, yeah, this is a good candidate for us to do a rebuild on. It doesn't look like it was too badly abused. Might not even, like, re need a rebuild. Might pull the clutches out and they're perfect. Yeah, but I want to go through it yeah. anyway just to take a C4s look at it. C4s are super easy. You can build yeah. them in the back of a truck. There you go. So there you go. So you'll be building this one up. All right, so that's it. We got the transmission out of the car. Next, I'm going to be, on this, we're going to be working on getting the transmission back in. We are probably going to go ahead and... Probably, probably, probably going to pull the probably engine. Gonna Pull the engine because yeah. it's not like anybody's going to ask us, but I know we're going to end up having to do it. We've got to do it anyway. So we'll pull the engine out, detail the engine, put all the parts on it, need to be on it. We'll have the CVF uh, dress system on the front of it. That's on the front of the 347. That's at the video you can see below me here. All the other front end stuff that we have to do. Oh, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> that we seen. All the stuff that we saw today. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. So we're going to be doing some other things. Some of it's going to be happening off camera because there's things we've already covered ad nauseum and we're not going to be putting a video up about that. But the engine pull, we probably will do a video on just simply because I think it's not a bad video to do just to show how to properly pull an engine out of one of these classic Mustangs. Yeah. So do me a favor, folks. Go ahead and check out the Patreon account at the $10 month level. You get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. It's pretty cool. We have a lot of people show up. It's a lot of fun. It always energizes me when I do it. But more importantly, if we've done anything with any of the videos that we do, won't you consider supporting us over on Patreon? That money actually doesn't even go to me. It goes to Andrew to help pay his salary. It pays for the guys to come in here on Saturdays as well. So that's where that money goes. I don't see a dime of it. It goes out to the guys that come in here and work. Also, subscribe to the channel. We are at 99000 and 61 the last time I looked yesterday. We are danger close to our 100,000 mark. So I'd like to get that done so we don't talk about subscriptions anymore. We slap that crap at the front of the video and if you don't want to do it, you don't have to because I'll be dead before we get to whatever the next month Whatever the next one is now. 200,000. Yeah. Let's just say 200,000. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll be dead. I won't care anymore. I'll be Alzheimer's or something YouTube like that. will be dissolved. Yeah, it'll be like ZooTube or GooberTube or something. So. <laughs> GooberTube. Old man. Old <laughs> man <laughs> GooberTube. It sounds like some guy that works at a quickie <laughs> mark. Anyway, as you always do, you off track me. Do me a favor, folks. Be kind to each other. Love on each other. Treat each other nice. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. Man. That went actually easier than I thought it would. It really did. The biggest holdup we had was just having to go get Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Blame on Darren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the transmission jack was over at Pat's place. Ah. So I had to go get the transmission jack. Well, I'll be nice, because he's on the way. Yeah. Went and picked him up. So it made me a little later mm. or, or dead I would have been. But not that much later. I actually had to stop at Home Depot because I wanted to get the Mafia polyethylene to put on the floor. <laughs> Patrick Bateman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if this polyethylene is for me. Buggy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>